it's a quiet afternoon, so let's go through the books. Adler Coles, heavy weather sailing. Okay, Adler Coles, this is a 1974, uh, the information is out of date, but I think I'd prefer to have this read to me on my deathbed rather than in a boat. Pretty scary. Um, you know, this is Thucydides, the landmark edition. To, to, uh, to appreciate both uh, Thucydides and Herodotus, any of the ancient Greeks, you really need maps. And these, I, I wouldn't say the translation is great, because I don't speak Greek, but the maps are sensational. And both the landmark Thucydides, and this is the landmark new edition I just got of uh, the campaigns of Alexander, which, uh, which I brought along to hope to get into. Um, the only thing wrong with these landmark editions is that the maps are great, but uh, I don't know who did it, maybe the general editor Strassler, some scholar, but uh, if you want to find out all about Strassler's opinion on something or anything cited in the text, just go to 32.b.16, parenthesis 3, A, B, dot C, sub parenthesis D, and you'll find it. I don't know why he did it that way, it's insane. Uh, the Great Captain's terrible book, don't buy it. This is a guy named Victor Clark, who I read many years ago and started again, The Saga of Solace. He sailed around the world in the late 40s after the war, as so many of these guys did, and picked up a, a local guy and had some adventures in an old leaky wooden boat. Not a really great read. Gypsy Moth Circles the World, we all know what that is. This is, the, this is uh, Joshua Slocum's son who wrote this. Victor Slocum, which will reveal to you, as a great fan of Spray and Captain Slocum, how much balderdash there is in Slocum's own account. The guy was world famous when he made his round the world solo venture. He obviously wrote a book to become a bestseller, all that stuff about what will it pay. It's a very interesting kind of a Yankee gamesmanship, I think. Oh dear. Yes, Martin Heidegger has no place on a boat. Um, this is really good. Um, you know, I'm not a religious guy, really, at all, but William James, a turn of the century thinker, went around and talked to all people about their religious experiences, the varieties of religious experience. In all cultures, they're all speaking in tongues, they're running around ranting and raving. Some of the founders of some of the pilgrims were the craziest. He concluded in his own opinion when asked after this, he was at Columbia at the time, I think, William James was that for whatever it's worth, people who had a belief, and I think it was James who said the difference between th th that there's facts and then belief. Anyway, the point James was making that people were happier and got more done when they had a complete belief, even if it flew in the face of wisdom or observation. That's what he found. Yes, yes, you know, you have to really have, Bertrand Russell is one of the funniest, best writers uh, of the public intellectuals, and this, A History of Western Philosophy, is just grand on every single philosopher you may have bumped into and not known anything about. I, it's Russell who says something like this about Nietzsche. He says that um, Friedrich Nietzsche, as I have just expounded, uh, may not seem consistent. If so, it is not my fault. The March Up Country, I haven't read this, brought it along. This is, is you know, the famous Xenophon. So uh, he was told by Socrates, go west, young man, sort of, actually, because he went east. But uh, have a good time. The Oracle at Delphi says it's OK. So Xenophon went off just about the time Greece was committing suicide, uh, somewhere around 400 BC, and um, got involved in this 10,000 mile march, which, which they were almost all killed. The march up country, Xenophon, he was there, eyewitness account, good adventure story, I am told. Birds, well you gotta have a field guide of birds. Don't go anywhere, I'm serious, without Plutarch's lives. Uh, I think that on here it says Dryden calls it, somebody calls it, uh, 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 the Bible of heroes, and it really is. Um, if you are down, pick up Plutarch at any point. And anybody he wrote about will make human behavior seem not only rational, but exciting. And plus which, you won't seem so completely crazy once you read about Alcibiades. 
Psychologically, the best of the of the yachtsman adventurers, Motessier, the long way. This is the one where Bernard goes into the round the world race and just keeps on going. Moby Dick, we can't say anything about the whale. The whale is a so if you're going on a long cruise and you and you don't understand existentialism, which I must say no one does, then you have to have Sartre's only only simpatico and understandable explanation of what his whole world is about, which is called in this translation, which is part of the problem, existentialism is a humanism. Now, let's take the translator who wrote that and hang her upside down and beat her with birch sticks. Existentialism is a humanism. Well, actually, existentialism is quite understandable if you read this lecture transposed for lay people. Cicero, my hero. If uh, I, I really wanted to be Cicero, and this is the best selected works, a very good introduction to him. I'm, don't forget, I'm 71. He's very good on old age. But the real thing that he's good at is taking people on. He called Mark Anthony all of these names. That's how they call the second Philippic against Anthony. I mean, he called Mark Anthony a fool. Say, listen to what I think about you, Mark Anthony. This is Rome, right? I think you're a fool, a liar. I think the fatuity of your remarks is, is uh, unprecedented. I think you should really go away, drop dead. You're destroying Rome. Well, I, they say Cicero wasn't very physically courageous, but his brain was courageous. And I always wanted to be him until Mark Anthony said, you know, I think I've had enough of this intellectual dickhead with 15 villas and sent some guys out to intercept them and they grabbed him off of his chase near a hedge and cut his head off. And uh, Mark Anthony nailed his tongue and his hands, which had spoken and written bad about Mark Anthony over the entrance to the Roman Senate. There's a warning, a warning I take seriously. The Fall, I don't know why this is here, but it's a good book by Camus or Camus or however you want. Here's the other volume of Plutarch, Don't Live Without It. You know, if, I'm alone at the moment, but if I wanted one companion who wasn't Lindsay Lohan, it would be uh, Charles Darwin. This guy, and this is the Voyage of the Beagle, which was, you know, preceded by 30 or 40 years Origin of Species. This is the one where he's 24 years old, he signs on as a botanist, and um, goes around the world, and all he does, his whole method, personality, biography, autobiography, his, his history, his future, his whole method is to look at what he's looking at, think about it, put it in a place, and then go and ask if anyone else has any opinions about what he's observed. I mean, for example, he finds out, he finds horse fossils in South America in 1840 or something. Well, we all know that horses were imported into the New World by the Spanish. And there were 10,000 horses by that time in South America. And Darwin said, well, how can it be that these are 10,000-year-old horse fossils? And the answer is, he concluded, that there were horses in the American continent, but they went extinct there, but not in Europe. The Europeans brought the horses over, and they flourished once again. I find that kind of commonsensical approach fascinating. And I think it's something we can all learn. Norton Book of the Sea, it's terrible. I picked this up the other night. We were having a bit of heavy weather. I was perhaps a bit discouraged, not feeling well, not eating much. <laughs> the bloody boat was leaking. Whenever I'm feeling bad, I pick up Alone Across the Atlantic, which is one of Chichester's first sailing books in which I think he does everything wrong that you can do. He wins the race, but the chronicle of Chichester being surprised by things is amazing. And um, he's not a very good writer, but as I recall, oh yes, my father gave me this in 1963. Um, these guys had all come back from the war. They wanted to do things. I think it's interesting that they should and that they could have written books 
and that now in 2014 people like me and us are reading them.